separate vacuums. Do you need separate vacuums for people with pets and people with no pets? It's a great question and we're going to answer that today. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question and I get to help you find an answer. Now today's show is brought to us by housecleaning360.com. This is an international referral database of about 6,000 house cleaners who refer to their customers, window washers and carpet cleaners and pest control people and other service providers that we know that are in our networks that service the home. So it may be another house cleaner. It may be another service provider of some sort, but check it out, housecleaning360.com. All right, on to today's question, who's from a house cleaner who wants to know this question about separate vacuums. Good evening. I'm starting a cleaning business uh, for seniors, and I would like to know if I need separate vacuums for clients that have pets and clients that do not have pets. All righty. That's an amazing question. And my suggestion, and this is a very polarizing answer, because there are people that only bring their own vacuums, and there are house cleaners that only use the customer's vacuums. But my specific suggestion would be this, use the customer's vacuum for a variety of reasons. If you use the customer's vacuum, all of the hair that you're gonna pick up from their pet is gonna be contained to that vacuum. Now sure, at the end of every cleaning, I always empty their vacuum just as a courtesy to them and also for me so that it's clean the next time I come because a lot of people don't clean in between. All right, but now here's the catch. If I get to someone's house, and they don't have a vacuum or their vacuum is broken. Then I bring it up to their attention and I say, hey, listen, I would love to clean your floors, but this just really isn't picking up very well. How long has it been since you've replaced your vacuum? Now, either the bristles on the bottom need to be cleaned, or maybe it needs to go into the shop and it just needs an overhaul, or maybe you would consider getting a new vacuum altogether, but this one is not doing a very good job and I just wanted to give you a heads up. Now they have a choice. They can go repair their vacuum, they can buy a new vacuum or they can spend time cleaning it out and trying to fix it themselves. But either way, it's not on you that their floor is not 100% clean. So as long as they know, and as long as you've specified this up front, what your rules are, it's going to be easy for you to just show up and use the customer's vacuum. Now, there are a couple of reasons that I recommend that. One of them is it prevents you from having to carry a vacuum in and out of your car at every house. Because if you do that three or four times a day, times however many years in the business, that's a lot of wear and tear on your body and in your car and possibly denting or dinging the door of your car as you're putting the vacuum cleaner in and out all those times. There's just a lot of wear and tear on your car and your body. So if the customer is, is up for it, I would use the customer's vacuum. Now there are a couple of rare exceptions. And for these rare exceptions, I would say have your own vacuum. And in the event that you need to use your own vacuum, you have a spare out in your car. Now, the rare examples are this. If you have a customer that's 80 plus years old, they're not going to go out and buy a new vacuum. They're not going to be doing any more vacuuming probably for the remainder of their life. And many people who are 80 plus years old have vacuums that are like old Kirby vacuums that are those really heavy vacuums, or they've got those really fun rainbow vacuums that fill up with water. And it's just so cumbersome and so time consuming that a lot of people don't use them for regular maintenance cleaning. So in those scenarios, as much as I would just love to use the customer's vacuum, I will go out to the car and I will get my lightweight vacuum and I will bring it in and I will actually use that on this particular customer's house. But here's the catch. When I go home, that vacuum has to have a complete overhaul. I've got to clean all the stuff out of the bristles. If they have dogs and cats, I got to clean all of the pet hair out. I've got to sanitize my entire outside of my, my canister and the wheels and all that stuff because that's my backup vacuum that's going to go into someone else's house. Now, for this reason, I prefer not taking a vacuum to someone's house because I don't want to cart all those germs from house to house. And if you're a busy house cleaner and you're doing two, three, or four houses in a day, how are you going to stop and clean your vacuum and wipe down the dust on the outside of it clean out the inside, clean the wheels, clean the, all the parts that touch their carpet, because yeah, you are transferring germs from one house to another. So my suggestion is use the customer's vacuum at, at every possible chance. If they got a crappy vacuum, be diplomatic and share with them the options that will help you do your job better. 
And in the event that you have to use your own vacuum, have a spare vacuum out in your car. And it doesn't have to be an expensive vacuum. I'll leave links in the show notes to a couple of vacuums that I've used over the years that have great suction power that are very inexpensive, but they are backup vacuums. It's just a backup vacuum that I use in case of emergency. Alrighty, so that's my two cents for today. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.